Parenting Junkie. Hey, welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about the very popular concept of grit. Grit has hit the headlines so often in recent years and how to create gritty kids is a question that most parents ask themselves. So what does gritty really mean? Well, gritty means that you have some kind of passion and interest and that you sustain it over a very long amount of time, so over years, and that you invest a lot of energy in it and overcome obstacles along the way. So gritty kids are able to be persistent, and not quit at the first time of any challenge. Now, I personally believe that it's often a really good idea to quit and that it's often really important not to. And finding that balance is very challenging for ourselves and how to encourage grittiness in our kids is obviously a real question. But luckily, Angela Duckworth has us covered on that front because she's written a really fantastic book about what grit is and how to cultivate it. So I'm gonna cut to the chase about what tips I really got as a parent from this book, but I strongly urge you to watch her TED talk and to read her research in her book. It's riveting stuff. So what is the bottom line on how she says that we can encourage grit in our kids? When parents are authoritative, not to be confused with authoritarian, authoritative parents are wise parents. They are parents that are both supportive and warm and also have high demands and high expectations of their children. So they demand a lot, they ask for a lot, they expect a lot, but they do that with a lot of love and support and understanding. Then parents have the ultimate relationship with their child to encourage their children to want to emulate and collaborate with their parents. And when children want to emulate their parents, then you've created a scenario where gritty parents create gritty children because your children are learning from you. Now, there are some more specific tactics rather than just being supportive and warm and having high expectations. The specific tactics that you might want to employ that Angela Duckworth uses with her own children is something called the hard thing rule. What is the hard thing rule? Well, she explains that in her family, everyone, including the adults, has to pick one hard thing that they are focused on and that they are going to do routinely. So either daily or weekly. It could be a ballet class, a music class. It could be a certain math course. It could be a career goal that you're setting yourself as an adult or working out at the gym. Whatever it is for you as the parent and for your child, it's something that they need to do until there is a natural stop. Okay, until the season is over, until the year is over, until tuition is paid. In other words, it is not something that they can quit just because they had a hard day. And I think that this is the point that she is trying to teach us is that we should let our children quit when they're not interested in something. Because to be gritty, you have to have an intense passion for something. But in order to develop that passion over a long time, amount of time and in order to develop the grittiness it takes to overcome obstacles, you can't quit just when the going gets rough. You can't quit something that you are passionate about, that you do love, just because it's challenging. So you need to learn that, yes, your interests are important, your choices are important, and that's why you can choose your hard thing. It has to be something you love and are interested in, but also that you must sustain it at least until there is a natural pause. When her kids hit high school, however, she encourages them to commit to their hard thing for at least two years, because she says committing to something and following through on something for two years is an indicator for much heightened grittiness in the future. So is grit something that you're interested in developing in your children or in your own self? And if so, how do you do it? What are your tips? for making sure that our children choose what they're passionate about and do things that they love and that they want to do, but also don't run and quit the first time the going gets rough. I'd love to hear your tips in the comments over on theparentingjunkie.com. And whilst you're there, sign up for email updates so you're sure never to miss an episode. And if you wanna ensure that your kids are truly gritty, then subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. Parenting Junkie. Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. 
The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Hi, everyone. Hello, Danilo. Welcome. So good Thank to you. Be here. Um, everyone, I'm very, very excited to be hosting Danilo Cuella, who is an unschooling, peaceful parent of a six year old boy and a four-year-old girl, a podcaster, a writer, a blogger. Um, and Danilo, you write and create content and teach us all about philosophy, morality, economics, free market, volunteerism, unschooling, peaceful parenting. And I'm going to direct everyone to Danilo's website, which is peacefulanarchism.com, where you can um, suck up all of that wisdom. And Danilo is also a very good friend of mine. We've met at a few um, homeschool meetups and our kids uh, love to play together. And as of such, I know, I happen to know behind the scenes that you're also an avid chess player. Um, an avatar you call yourself a piano player and a philosopher. Welcome, Danilo. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, I, uh, we met just what, a couple months ago and... Uh, I found out you do content yourself related to um, peaceful parenting and homeschooling and unschooling. And uh, immediately, you know, we're like, what? Really? <laughs> Serious? <laughs> so it's immediate nice. connection. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, so I'm going to pound you with some questions. Okay. So um, the first one is, how did you come to home education? Um, so when my when my son was born in 2010, we um, didn't really know much about homeschooling. My wife bought some books. Um, one of them was uh, The Continuum Concept. Um, well, I'm not sure if these books are more like homeschooling or is it peaceful parenting? I mean, I, mean, I get the two confused sometimes. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, like John, uh, what is it? John Holt, John Holt. right? And, and, and Peter Gray, those kind, of, those yep. kind of things. And also I got, I got some um, um, John Taylor Gatto mm -hmm. books. And I was reading about him, and, uh, and yeah, so so just learning about um, the the power of um, inspiring children and encouraging them to follow their passions, and uh, you know, a, a real respect for their um, desires of what they want to learn, what they're interested in, what they're passionate about, and and I think from from reading about that literature, I gained um, a deep respect for children and what they want to do so that, that's probably a major reason mm, that's beautiful i love those books as well they've been very inspiring to me um so as you know your children are already reaching the ages of you know classical school traditional school um, and as they kind of reach those ages it's very typical for homeschoolers or unschoolers to um feel that stress of like what other children are learning you know in school and how our children are learning so many things but not necessarily uh, the things that are going on in school so do you have as a family do you have an educational agenda like do you have some things that you know for sure that you want your children to learn and um how will you you know how will you facilitate that how will you uh, if at all and make sure they hit those milestones and learn those things. Yeah, that's um, it, it's one point of contention between me and my wife because I'm so much more uh, attracted to the complete unstructured learning, and she's a little bit more. Um, it's difficult for her to let go of some of the structure that she was brought up. My wife grew up in um, communist Romania. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can imagine the type of structure she had <laughs> right. as compared as compared to us. So um, yeah, uh, so, so it's very difficult for her to let go. But uh, you know, slowly she she came to realize how um, 
it, it's just so much more beautiful to um, allow children the freedom to pursue, you know, what they want to pursue. And so, and so I don't really have a curriculum. Um, mm-hmm. My wife, you know, she encourages like, you know, workbooks and, you know, we, we go over, um, um, you know, the alphabet and read, I read them books and, you know, they do, they know a little bit of writing, uh, a little bit of uh, word recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think, I think, a lot of parents um, get kind of frightened when, you know, your child is not at a particular level, let's say, especially reading mm-hmm. and writing as compared to other children at that level. And so, you know, there's always this comparison that goes on. And, uh, and I think my wife tends to do a lot of that as well. You know, you know, our children are reading yet. You know, they're not doing this by this age, you know. And I think that kind of comparison is, uh, is pretty crippling. You know, when you're always comparing your children or yourself to other people and their children. And, um, and you can't, you know, because to me, the whole philosophy of unschooling is understanding that all children are unique. So how can you really compare <laughs> one child to another child? You know, we all have, we all are born different backgrounds, different um, strengths, different weaknesses, right? Different handicaps. Um, so you cannot really compare one child to the other because there's so much, there's so many factors that go into um, how quickly or how slowly a child learns. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I think it's thoroughly destructive to make those comparisons. And, um, and I try really hard not to. And uh, I think sometimes my wife gets sucked into it. But, you know, I think we have to, um, yeah, we just understand and, and respect our children's unique nature and just um, help them to pursue and, and discover what they're actually interested in. Because I don't know what they're interested in, but hopefully we can expose them to different things and different experiences. And, you know, like uh, I, I met you at a homeschooling farm and that was awesome and that was an awesome experience. So different things like that, you know, just um, to hopefully um, kindle their love of learning. I think that's the goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, beautiful. Um, so. If you if you were speaking to someone who you know who's considering home education, what are some key lessons about home education that you've learned and that you wish you knew uh, when your oldest was just a toddler a few years ago? What are some things that you've learned over the last few years that other people might benefit from? So I think one of the things that people often confuse when we say homeschooling that's that's one of the reasons I don't like the word homeschooling. Um, home education is 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 good. Um, unschooling is a really good term, but then, but the, the, the word schooling confuses a lot of people, right? Because they think that the same exact thing that you're doing in school, you do at home, right? <laughs> like we're just we're just locking our kids in a room and throwing them books and papers right. and say, do that. Which, <laughs> you know, I mean, whereas it, some homeschoolers do it that way, right? Some people, well, some, some do, do. Yeah. right, right. Some do, yeah, you're right. There is a range, right. um, but uh, I guess because maybe we do more of the unschooling, so. Um, we are in the house, but we're also outside the house a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so there's a, there's a, there's a big variety. And so, yeah. So, so the first thing is that that's what people think of it when they, when you say homeschooling is, uh, you know, exactly the same as at home. And that's, that's the first misnomer for the way we do it anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, so that's, that's one thing. Um, hmm. so just the fact that just telling people like that unschooling in particular really doesn't mean sitting down with a book at the kitchen table. It could, so, you know, maybe give us some examples, like what does your week look like? What does your day look like? Give us an example of how, of how that does manifest. Um, all right. So, um, so I'll say for Mondays, right, we have, swim lessons <laughs> and we go and do that and that's awesome they love it and uh, you know they're learning how to swim even though it's winter they, they still love it mm-hmm. um and uh, and then um and then on, on tuesdays we have um oh, g- gymnastics and ballet my daughter loves ballet she's four years old um, mm-hmm. absolutely loves it she started ballet when she was three mm-hmm. and um and i think oh that's another thing that's kind of interesting is that i think a lot of parents they approach parenting in general um by saying you're gonna do this 
for mm -hmm. this many years. I don't care if you like it or not, you're going to do it. Like whatever, karate or an instrument or ballet, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to do it, you know? And um, I remember in one of your videos, you talked about grit, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and saying to your children, but I guess that's a little bit different because in that video, I think you were saying where you and the child agree or the child wants to do it, but then they back out later saying, I don't want to do it anymore. Right. And, and then you say, well, but why don't you just do a little more and just see if you really like it and then you can stop. So maybe it's different. Um, right. But, um, right? Am, I, am I right with that? Yeah, you are. You're talking about um, Angela Duckworth's research about grit and what she recommends right. to parents, which I think is a good, to me, it seems like a good recommendation. Exactly as you say, children have to choose what they're interested in. There's no point developing grit in something that you're not interested in. You won't right. be gritty, right? right? But right. if you said, I want to learn an instrument, take ballet, whatever it is, then making some kind of cut off that no, you have to at least finish the season that I've paid for, or you have to at least um, you know, um, I don't know, use up the materials that we've bought. Like, because what happens in any arena of life, and I think sometimes in unschooling we can forget this, is that there are obstacles that you have to overcome. And even if we're free and if we're liberated and if we're going only after our own interests, I think we have to learn that grittiness of overcoming those obstacles and we and so that's what her recommendation was, that once your child's chosen something, and she wasn't talking about very young children. I mean, she, mm, she, was, yeah. she was talking about like six-year-olds, like elementary age children choosing one thing and sticking with it for a year or a season. And then once they're teenagers, expecting them to stick with it for two years. So building up that yeah. capacity. I think, you know, I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you think about that. But. So, so I, I don't think I have a problem with that because, I mean, my, my kids don't, um, they don't seem like they quit easily. <laughs> like my daughter, she's been doing ballet now. She's been doing ballet now for um, a year and a half. And when we started, she was doing just once a, once a month, uh, once a week, sorry. And, um, and then she was so excited to go each week. My wife's like, why don't we sign her up for a second time? Because she, she seems like she's so excited. Yeah. And when we, when we told the ballet teacher, she was confused. She's like, what? but she's only three like mm. they only come once a week and, and we're like, but she really wants to come again so she was the only three-year-old that came twice a week mm. uh, which was which is very interesting and this woman like has been around around for a long time i don't know like 20 years 25 years and she's like she's never seen a three-year-old so excited and wanting to go and and so yeah so uh she, my she's daughter was showing her passion <laughs> i i don't know we'll see I, but see she loves it right now and uh, yeah. so the gymnastics they also love that there, there's no um there's no feeling of wanting to quit that um the swimming they love that like like they make it really fun over there it's really cool um with that um and yeah so that's monday tuesday and then wednesday Usually we go out and we um, meet up with a group of, uh, we call it a forest play group. Mm -hmm. and I mean, now it's winter, it's kind of died down. Like my kids don't really like the cold, so we stayed in. But during the, uh, you know, spring, summer, fall, we're out all mm -hmm. the time um, in, in the woods. The kids can play, you know, we, all, all of us homeschooling, unschooling families, we bring food, cook outdoors, make a fire. You know, as one of the women has an outdoor stove. So, you know, it's really beautiful bonding time for us, for the parents and for the kids. Mm -hmm. um and so there's that and then thursday we go to another place for um uh classes on science and math which again they're geared more towards homeschoolers and mm -hmm. they really make it very interesting the kids love that as well mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean <laughs> you know um it, it's funny that uh, i think a lot of homeschoolers um fear that their kids are going to be home too much, mm. right? And so they're like, we, you know, what are we going to do? We need to find things for the kids to do. But but now it seems like a lot of people in our group, their fear is like, maybe we're doing too much, mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe we need to give our kids a break. Because and and the kids sometimes complain, we always go out. Why don't we stay right. home we're today? <laughs> right. So so we gotta um, you know find a balance and respect mm -hmm. that as well um, because uh, that's definitely important but but yeah so there's no scarcity of interaction outside of the home mm -hmm. um and uh, and i think that's a major myth 
that is uh, that is debunked with the way we do it is um, you know we're always out and about very active and I think you're the same way right mm. pretty similar so um, I th I don't remember the last time we spent a whole day at home it doesn't happen I mean maybe, <laughs> like maybe Saturday do you know what I mean like we right. are always out yeah at least once a day right um, right then, I mean look we're also lucky to live in an area of the world where homeschooling and unschooling is legal and supported and there are plenty of meetups and museums and play groups and all these different things that you can do and um, so in that sense it's you know we're really really blessed yeah yeah and, and we recently moved to new jersey and the major one of the major factors for choosing new jersey is because of the um very relaxed homeschooling regulations um and that's um caused um a lot of homeschooling groups to spring up and so there's a lot of activities for homeschoolers and unschoolers to get together and do meetups and uh, go to museums go to parks do hikes do uh, so many different things and uh so yeah so there's not there, there's never um a scarcity of things to do you know that's never the fear um it's just <laughs> it comes down to finding the time sometimes <laughs> right right finding the balance okay fantastic um I want to ask you my next question. So do you um, find that you get enough time alone for your own work and projects? And if so, how? Um, I know that it's, you know, you, you're the primary homeschool parent. Um, your wife works outside of the home. Um, so when do you, you know, first of all, does it sometimes drive you crazy to be with your kids all day? Like, do they sometimes just annoy the hell out of you? And if not, how? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, how do you get some alone time uh, and some time to work on the things that are meaningful to you or to work out or to be with friends or time that is not with children? Yeah, yeah. So um, ever since, what was it, um, was it two and a half years ago? Yeah, I've been the stay-at-home uh, homeschooling slash unschooling father of my kids. My wife works from home. And, um, and, and one of the reasons why... Um, we go out so much is because she works from home. She wants us to be out so she can be free and or she can have quiet in the house. It's, oh, it's so hard to concentrate when the kids are screaming, you know, yeah. kids are screaming and running around. Um, but wait, what was what was the last part of the question? Sorry. If you yourself get time without your children, oh, work on oh, your right, right. And if, right, right, right. And how you do that. Um, yeah, yeah, because I also have my website and my videos, my, my interviews and all that writing I do. Um, and I mean, the way I find time, really, I wake up early in the morning, like whew, five o'clock. Like that's a, everybody's sleeping. I'm like, excellent. This is my creative time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, you know, some pe people have told me that uh, I'm, I'm very like people who I meet up with. Right. They say that I'm very relaxed. Like mm -hmm. I am, according to my friends, the picture of the relaxed parent of, uh, you know, I don't raise my voice. I mean, it's funny because I think I do and my wife thinks I do too much. Uh, uh, do, oh yeah, too much. And, but the people around me, they say I don't, raise, I don't get, get angry at all, which is very interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that um, I have, I, I'm able to, you know, talk to my kids in a way that, um, you know, not really like striking fear into them, but, you know, having them understand various things. And so we, you know, we, we developed a great relationship um, outdoors too. You know, they, uh, I, you know, I think my kids are very, um, very easy to talk to in terms of uh, with other people, like other, other um, kids, other adults even, because they don't really recognize um, authority figures because they have not been in school <laughs> so so that's one of the interesting things and you know what's interesting let me just say this um, um <clears throat> oftentimes when we come around uh you know me and my kids people smile a lot right they just they just smile and i feel like when children are given the freedom to um to just be <laughs> and to just play to just you know they they understand okay we have freedom and and uh and i think their happiness is reflected or the freedom it, it produces this happiness and people see that and it makes people's lives it, you know it uplifts people right mm -hmm. um because you know one of the things that really hurts me is when i see 
kids that are so um, obedient to their parents and uh, you know quiet and and you know taciturn and mm. don't uh, don't speak out of line you know don't talk back and all that kind of stuff and um, and I don't know those, those kind of kids they don't um, necessarily I, I don't see that they get the same kind of reaction from other adults mm. so I think adults can recognize when children are being genuine and sincere. And I think that's a very interesting observation um, that I made, you know, people <laughs> for their own kids, most, you know, some people will say, I want, you know, obedience, you have to respect me, you know, respect my authority. But then when they see other kids that are more free, they're like, oh, isn't that so beautiful? Look at that. <laughs> I find that an interesting contradiction. <laughs> I find it absolutely amazing that you don't yell at your kids. I don't know anyone who doesn't yell at their kids. Not, I don't mean people who don't want to yell at their kids. I know a lot of people who don't want to yell at their kids, but including myself, I'm very committed to not yelling, and yet I still will get triggered several times a week, find myself enraged um, yelling, even though I preach this stuff, I teach it, I read it, I learn it. I'm an eternal student of peaceful parenting, um, but I will fall into that pit uh, if I haven't gotten enough sleep, if I haven't gotten enough alone time, if I'm irritated or worried or stressed about anything, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, I will, you know, lose my cool. And I'm a relatively relaxed person, like I'm quite a Zen person. So that's just amazing to me. What is, what is like, is that true? Do you really never like completely lose your shizzles? Um, well, I, I'm the type of person that I don't get mad. I don't get mad easily at all. <laughs> I've been told that by, by many people, like my, 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 wife's fam my, my, my wife's family, they say, are, are you human? Do you have emotions? Do you get worried about anything? <laughs> um, but um, I mean, I, I mean, I don't get like, when you say shout or yell, like, like if my kids are far away, I'll shout. And call them. That's not considered yeah. shouting. No, no, no. I mean, angry. I mean, lose your temper. Yeah. You don't even have to be shouting. Just saying mean things, or you know. No, I guess not. I guess not. Um, wow. And you know what's interesting is that. Uh, so I'm with my kids all the time, right? And uh, I, I don't know. Maybe you can relate to this. That um, the the parent who's not with their kids for most of the day has the shortest attention, has the shortest um, fuse right? They're like, well, why is this kid listening to me? And, and I'm like, that's what he does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't, let it, I don't let it get to me. It's so true because I, you know, I often tell people, people say to me, how can you be with your kids so much, so much of the time? And I say, to them, you know, it gets easier the more you're with them. Mm. <laughs> it's like, it's the opposite. When you're with them only short amounts of time in the day and whatever, that's a choice that many people have to make and that's fine. It's actually harder to be with kids just in small spurts i think because you don't just feel their rhythm so intuitively and you get so attuned and you get so used to it and you find your rapport and you just you're pa like you can't be losing your patience every single minute of the day you just mm. get patient you know you know your kids well and i don't know, i just find the more you do it the easier it gets i think that's an important thing for people to know about homeschooling and unschooling is that get used to that like people always like you go to the supermarket with all three of your children that sounds like my worst nightmare i'm like what do you mean that's every tuesday like that's just you know one one thing i wanted to mention uh you reminded me of is um you you said you know even though i'm a um you said even though i'm a, I'm a proponent of peaceful parenting and empathy and reasoning with my kids and and all this, I still get mad and triggered. And that's a very good point because it illustrates that we are imperfect human beings. We have defects, right? Even though we um, talk about this philosophy and me, I talk about morality and economics and philosophy and principles, um, still we are imperfect human beings and that's okay. It just means that we're striving to be better. And I think that's what's important if you can recognize that you are imperfect um, and then to, um, to try to improve constantly on that, I think that's the, uh, that's the most humble and modest approach you can have um, because all, all too often people think that, you know, there's only one way to parent and this is the way and I know the right way. Just listen to me and you'll be fine. No, it's not like that. You know, mm -hmm. there's not one way to raise all children. 
<laughs> because all children are unique. All yeah, children have exactly. different have di- mm-hmm. have different needs. So yeah. once once you become so stoic and hardened to that, and you're not you know inflexible, and you're not willing to give um, based on the individual needs of your children, then um, you will encounter many more difficulties. And that I think is much more exhausting to be so rigid with your parenting. It's much more exhausting than it is. Um, to try to cater uh, to your children and try to figure out and reason with them and ask them questions. You know, why are you feeling like this? You know, let's talk about this. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's just, I just, it's so much more exhausting. Because that's how, that's how I see some parents, like at the end of the day, they're like, oh, I'm so tired of parenting. It's so exhausting. <laughs> and I think it's because, you know, trying to lay down punishment, trying to yell and, and mm-hmm. scream over them and, you know, don't, don't talk over me. And, you know, I'm your mother and all this stuff. Um, that's exhausting. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you reminded me of that. Agree. Yeah. Trying to control other people. It's like a, I always call it just a fast route to suffering, <laughs> like for everyone, you know? Right. Um, but then it, do you ever see, you know, certain behaviors in your children or certain attributes that you're like, Oh, this is not what I want my kids to be doing this is not how I want my kids to be behaving I'm not proud of this you know do you ever feel that way yeah my daughter um four years old she's um pretty mature (laughs) for that her age I don't know because she's a girl Mm -hmm. but um she um she can control my son very Mm -hmm. who's old two years older and uh you know she controls him by you know emotionally you know she's shorter She's smaller, but she's got an intense uh, temper, right? And she really screams loudly when she's not happy. Um, and, you know, people who we've been with, you know, they, they, their kids sometimes say, oh, she look at her, she's so spoiled. But, you know, she's got things that she, she's going through. And, um, you know, maybe that's handed down. Maybe that's in the genetics. I don't know. Um, but, um, but, yeah, so, so she's got a real controlling nature. and even even like um, when we're with the other homeschooling kids, um, you know, a bunch of boys and girls, and Marcus and Serena, they often say, my kids, they often say, Serena, my daughter, is the leader of the girls. <laughs> like, it's just understood. My daughter is the leader of the girls. Right. And she leads. And, and uh, even though there's other kids that are taller and older, like, she doesn't like people or other girls. Um, not following her <laughs> so it's interesting um but uh you know i uh, you know so so i think she requires a little bit more talking to and you know i i con- i'm constantly like once she's screaming and yelling at the top of her lungs you know i'm not going to try to compete with that i'm not going to scream and, and overpower her because that's just going to make her worse right so mm-hmm. i i i think there's a there's a point like when she, when she gets angry slowly and you see, you see the emotion building, right? The tension building. And you have, you have a short period where you can diffuse that with reason and you try. And then once it gets past that, it's like, it was compared to a, a nerve cell firing. Like after you, the, um, the, the, the stimulus gets past the threshold, it has to continue the whole, action potential until it goes back to resting phase that, that's, <laughs> so how, one, that's how tantrums yeah. work yeah right right yeah. so i don't I, I don't have i don't get bothered it doesn't matter where i am like I, like she had one um last night we were in a, a grocery store a big grocery department store Classic. and 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 she yeah she wanted she wanted lipstick <laughs> she wanted my lipstick i said no i called my wife she said no and so basically screaming, shouting, tantrum. And so, and so all I do is I say, all right, all right, um, just let me know when you're done, okay? I'll be right here. <laughs> like, what else can you do, you know? I'm yeah. not going to physically restrain her, pick her up. What am I going to do? Close her mouth? You know, you can't do anything. No. So you just kind of let it roll out, and uh, eventually she, she's finished um, expressing herself. So, so that's one thing that, that – um, is going to be difficult for her, I think, is, is learning to manage her emotions. But I think, you know, with time, that's something that you learn with time. 
And, you know, my son does not have that problem at all. He's kind of like me. He doesn't really get mad at much. It takes a lot for him to get mad. Mm. Um, so we're, we're very similar. <laughs> I, you could probably say my, my, uh, my daughter's like my wife. In a sense. <laughs> um, although she wouldn't like to admit it. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I think that's one difficulty that, uh, that she has. You know, we're constantly trying to talk to her and, you know, trying to reason yeah. with her and trying to say that, um, you know, it's okay. It's okay if he's looking at you. You know, you don't have to scream because he's looking at you. He's not hurting you. <laughs> he's just looking at you. So, yes, yeah, she, she can be a little controlling. That's, that's, yeah. that's one thing. That's it. Yeah. I, that's, I mean, that's a challenge. I, a lot of parents have that temperament, right? That's almost, I would say, nothing to do with school um, or not school. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, it just sounds like you're so patient and, and forgiving and, and you take, I love that you said that's something that you learn with time. Cause I think it's so hard as parents to take that long-term view and understand child development that like you don't have literally the cognitive capacity at that age to, uh, to control those emotions. It's something that you learn through the empathy again and again and again over the years. So that's, that's beautiful. And um, we have to close up. We have about two more minutes. Um, so just, do you have any thoughts? Okay, someone is considering homeschooling and unschooling. They're really not sure. It, it costs a lot of money, right? They probably have to give up a salary maybe to do this or, or change jobs to do this. Um, and, you know, what is kind of your pitch for why someone should choose unschooling? you got two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, when I'm talking to somebody who's, uh, let's say, has their kids in public school or is considering doing that, um, mm -hmm. one of the things is I say, reflect on your own history. How was your public school experience? Did you enjoy it? What parts of it did you not enjoy? Um, and um, <laughs> very few people, I have to say, tell me, I love my public school experience. And, and so when they say they do not, I say, now, if you don't, how can you, with a good conscience, send your own flesh and blood children to the same very institution that you did not enjoy? Um, and uh, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I definitely cannot do that. I, uh, the things that I learned that I think were valuable in public school um, are things that I learned outside of public school on my own because I was interested in them, not because I was forced to memorize them. So, um, so yeah, that, that's one thing that I would focus on is ask people, what's your experience, you know? Um, because I, I think, uh, you know, everybody has their own view about children and, you know, what, you know how children should be raised. But, you know, I, I, I try to take a more personalized approach and, you know, talk about the specific person that I'm talking to and try to connect with them that way. So, right. Yeah. Danila, thank you so much. You're such an inspiring parent. Seriously, I've seen you in action and it's really, it's a beautiful thing to see your bond between you and your kids and how much flow and ease and patience and just humanity, just like relationships. It's really inspiring. I find you a very, very inspiring parent. Um, and I love that you just unschool with such, without doubts, without hesitation, just with such trust. Like when I see you, I just see trust. And I think that's a really, um, your children are very, very lucky. Um, Thank you. I, I, I would I'd say the same way about your parenting. I'm really inspired when, you know, when, I, when I came across your channel and your videos and I'm so happy I did that we met and uh yeah thank you, thank you so, <laughs> so a much great friend. And everyone check out peaceful anarchism so you can get more of Danilo's wisdom and thank you so so much for being here Danilo. no problem thank you very much for having me bye thank you for listening if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peaceful anarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin my Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. 
if you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.